Hey everyone, it's Estelle Ladybug. Welcome to Sunday, our YM Sip and Stitch. Cheers to you all, those who are tuning tun in early and those who are tuning in later on as a replay. Either way, Sunday is an awesome day to, you know, come together, have a few smiles, sip together, talk about some dope things, sign out and do it all over again, over and over again. So cheers to you. So to get started, we are going to do like we do every week, which is start with a yarn ball. Um, I'm going to chat it up about something I believe to be important. And, you know, we're just going to take it from there, share some stories. I have like, some really great stories, some awesome experiences that I would love to share with you all. So let's kind of get into it. Let's see if I can fix this. Okay. Yeah. So let's get into it. So a little bit about yarn movement. So yarn movement is a global fashion and lifestyle brand that's really been created to um, really inspire consumers to value craftsmanship. As a crocheter, I'm also a sewer. Um, I believe in handcrafted work. Um, I also understand how much time goes into handcrafted work. Um, and I understand how it makes a difference uh, versus something that's being mass produced. There's a personal connection that happens with that. So when I say value craftsmanship, it's understanding the relationship between the designer and the consumer or the customer and understand, you know, what their needs truly are. You know, how many of you out there have been in this, uh, you know, a space? I know for myself, even when I'm here, I just always feel like the fit model it's not necessarily based on my particular body style. So it's very hard to like buy a set. Um, and in college, this was something I noticed. So that's where I started like just crocheting bathing, bathing wear, uh, bathing suits and swimwear. Uh, and over the years, I had to master this concept of understanding how to really put myself in a space where, you know, like I'm addressing everyone's needs, you know, because we all do have different body shapes. And so that meant when I first started off, I was just making bikini tops that you can just wear fashionably, not something that necessarily can go in the water. And that had to like really get to a place where there's been a lot of research, a lot of like error, trial and error that went into it. And along the way, it's produced this space now where I can create swimwear that I can say 100% guarantee that you can go swimming in it. Um, and not worry about, you know, things falling out because things can fall out, you know, male or female. <laughs> um, and with that, also thinking about the journey of how the matriculation is happening, you know, going into the space of creating yarn movement um, and all the different, you know, um, peaks and valleys, I would say, along the way of even just becoming an entrepreneur, that my journey, my personal story journey started really at my nine-year-old self, spending time with my grandmother and her friends and, you know, just sitting back and understanding like what they were doing and how I could pick it up and moving into a space of understanding how it really impacted my life of, you know, learning to crochet put me in a direct position where I had complete control over a, a source of income, had complete control over, you know, how I show up for stuff, honestly, you know, um, really starting off, it was kind of like this space where it was just like, oh my God, this is so hard. How would I ever learn to do this? Especially looking at um, women who are crafters. They have been crafters for generations. And here I am, this new generation, just, you know, trying to be present <laughs> um, and learning to sew in that space, learning to cross stage, learning to crochet ultimately. Um, and so, and so um, when I think about that, that makes me think about how many other little girls could benefit from a relationship, an experience like that, that can put them in a space where they can understand exactly who they are and how they should be showing up in a space and knowing that they can walk in a room confident, knowing that they can do something that somebody told them that they can't do or they thought maybe momentarily that they couldn't do for themselves, but something had to, you know, inspire them to take the first step. And that's what Believe in What You Dream is. Believe in What You Dream is the nonprofit arm of the movement where um, we are teaching young girls to discover that superpower, understanding that this power within themselves 
to have this capability to think about just taking the step. And that's what I like to do with crochet. Um, it's a great vehicle to use because, I mean, let's face it, yarn is non-threatening. I mean, all the things that are threatening in life, you know, that we can select, you know, by name, by hand, by person, um, that potentially puts us in a space that becomes something or someone that takes away a key essential to our success. Yarn does not fall into the category of being a problem. Um, and within that, it's an easy way to just show how powerful your thoughts are. So walk into a space, you know, um, that you have this ability of saying, hey, you know what? I'm up for the challenge today. I can do this and I'm gonna continue to do so. And that's really what we're teaching in a Believe in What You Dream um, workshop. We start off with creating dream catchers as a way to really, really visualize this thought. So if you have this dream catcher up above your bed, minimally, no matter what happened in a day, you get to go to sleep and wake up to the fact that, hey, daily reminder that I have something to believe in. That's mine, you own it. And by even just taking your hands and putting to action, you know, these thoughts that go driving into this dream catcher, that's yours, you own it. Moving into a space where journaling your journey, you're writing down what the thoughts are. You know, like my dream is blah, 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 right? I wanna do this. And then also just taking it a step further, because I don't know about you all out there, but just growing up, one thing I know for certain that I heard over and over again, <laughs> besides mind your own people business, stay out of your own people business, besides hearing those things, I would hear, follow your dreams constantly. And you would never really honestly hear this, follow your dreams by doing A, B, C, D, and E, F, G, right? That didn't come until I feel like for me on my own journey that it didn't come into it like after college, in college, you know, like where it's just like finally, you know, in a space where you're out of your comfort zone or I was out of my comfort zone being around individuals that I was a prayer and a hope that they cared and loved me as much as my family could, you know, um, where it was just like when you're at your wit's end, your back is, is up against the wall, what you're going to do, you're going to take a step. And those steps are important to make sure you outline and continue to do over and over again, just because it's just one of those things where you control it. So you should be going out to do it. And my goal is to really, really help young girls get to that place quicker, essentially. So these beanies right here are being designed and created as a way to um, support that thought of helping young girls discover their superpowers because the third part of the workshop is to learn to crochet. And that's really the tie-in overall of overarching things that are going on. So with that being said, these beanies are available. The link is in the bio for wherever you're watching. Um, you would just look for a granny square beanie and the purchase of this means you get to impact the lives of two girls. What does that mean now, right? I think that there's a lot of verbs and adjectives that are being thrown out to mean a lot of things. And for in this instance, is impact, we're talking about immediate change. Um, we're talking about giving girls not only the workshop, the workshop is just kind of like, you know, I think the cherry on top. Although when I first started this journey of creating Believe in What You Dream, it was really like it was the it was the Sunday, it was the cherry on top, it was everything. Um, and after really getting into a space of just like understanding who these girls are and kind of like the, what they're going through on a daily basis, I discovered that it was more of like, you know, this is this is the cherry on top of being able to give them the things that are going to empower their lives that day and impact the change. Um, and so some of the things that are going inside the Dream Girl Kit, because I identify each girl that goes through the Believe in What You Dream program as a dream girl. So each dream girl will receive a dream girl kit. Inside the dream girl kit, so get all the materials that are needed to create the dream catcher, the journal, and have their crochet lesson. In addition to the fact that they're getting personal hygiene products or personal care products. Um, and that means that, um, you know, soaps, 
lotions, you know, sanitary products, which is a major, major issue globally. Um, and not just globally, actually, like when I say global, that doesn't in, in include nationally here in the U.S. because that is actually a problem, a very, very bad problem, actually. Um, and also personal energy, and it comes in the form of solar. And so each girl is getting solar lamps, they're getting their personal hygiene lamps, and those are the things that we can do that impact them immediately, right? Because if you take someone who power, having power in their house, being able to study, being able to see at night, we know all the, ch the, 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 the horror that is attached to being dark. Now we're saying that we're giving you a solar lamp, it's controlled by the sun, you charge it during the day, you turn it on at night. That's immediate. Like literally, like you're taking kids out of the dark, girls out of the dark and putting them in light immediately. So my whole tagline is enlighten minds while we light up worlds, right? Because the alignment and the lighting up their lives or enlightening their minds happens with the crochet lesson, happens with them outlining and journaling their lives. And then we move into this space of, we're also gonna light up your life while we're doing it. So therein lies the superpower, okay? <laughs> so I think that's pretty clear. Um, if you have any questions, feel free. You can put a comment in the chat. Um, you can send me an email at info at yarnmovement.com. You can DM me at yarnmovement. I'm pretty active, everyone knows, I think at this point. And if you don't know, please be sure to follow. Um, also, be sure to click the subscribe button below um, and to click on that bell to give you notifications when I'm jumping in. With Black Friday coming in, I'm going to be doing exciting things daily um, season. Um, of course, we already saw this one because this is the hat from last week, uh, to say the beanie from last week. But this is also another one that was created this week um, from one of my clients who is a part of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. So it's a lot of the pink and green. So tell your friend to tell a friend, support yarn movement. Um, all proceeds are going towards, um, especially for the granny square hats and many of, most of the proceeds for anything that's outright purchased for yarn movement is going directly towards Believe in What You Dream. So um, depending on how you make your original purchase will determine if you've received a, you know, like off letter. So that's also an option. And we're going to get into these yarn balls now because I would like to get to crocheting and stop talking to you guys. Um, well, let's see. And, you know, feel free to drop a message. Let me know what you guys are working on if you're working on anything. Um, if you're not a crocheter or a knitter and you're interested in picking up crocheting to be the thing that you do, please look out for information because I will be launching educational courses, not only on how to crochet, because I think there, there's 50 million billion <laughs> videos online on how to learn to crochet, um, but more so some of the business stuff on, you know, understanding how you establish your business, how you can, you know, really stabilize things to make money moving forward, how things should be set up. So by the end of the year, this isn't a hobby. This is something that you're setting yourself up to really make money and do it all over and over again, um, because that is very much a part of this journey um, for yarn movement, at least for myself, of going through and properly just getting things done, which has helped me sustain for the last 21 years. So that immediately gives me, you know, like competency and authority. Uh, to do so. And along with this side of uh, empathy as well, because I can be empathetic to um, a lot of the things that are going on. I know that there are many crafters out there who are going through this, this rough time of being in pandemic and COVID and not having your business established also means that if you had a full-time job and you got laid off, that also puts you in a space where um, it's not looking good, you know, and it doesn't feel good either. You know, of course, God is going to bring us all through because that is just, you know, what in my heart, I believe, of course. But also it's about putting yourself in a position where you can prepare for some of the expected um, events that kind of happen in life. And I've pretty much been through all of them. I mean, trust me, <laughs> uh, you know, there's been a time where, you know, 
my vehicle was repossessed for like five days, you know, because I was so behind on, you know, so many of my bills that, um, yeah, they came and picked up my car. I went in, um, I was out. It was like one o'clock in the morning and the guy came to the door and he was just like, I need your key to the vehicle. And, you know, during a time, my roommate was just like, oh, don't give them the key. They're going to take the car. And I was just like, they have a flatbed. They can get it anyway. Right. But in my mind, I already knew I was just like, OK, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. But thankfully, I had been working on some projects and literally like when the mail came the next day, I had fifteen thousand dollars in the mail from this project that I worked on. Went and got and picked, went and picked up my car. Um, they released it to me, but it took some time for them to get the paperwork over to me. And it was back mine within a week. So they picked up on a Saturday and I had everything straight by by Friday. I mean, so looking at that, for instance, you know, um, I mean, I can go on and on to the break of dawn, you know, like I've lived in several states and several countries at this point. I've done the whole living on people's couches, trying to, you know, get myself, you know, will myself into a way of understanding like how things were going to be. And ultimately through it all, it also gave me a lot of lessons, you know, lessons that I've been able to take away. And now that became teachable things where, you know, there's a lot of things I could have avoided had I gone through the process properly and not skipped, you know, like, unfortunately skip some things that are like, you know, just amateur, you know, of not, you know, going through and having, you know, a business license, not going through and actually establishing what kind of business should be registered and not just doing a DBA. Um, I operated for many years under my own personal social security uh, number, which directly put me in liability for a lot of other things, you know? Um, and all of these things can, I'm willing to share and I'm willing to put, help you be in a space where if you have a goal of wanting to take your career or your hobby or what you're most passionate about into the next level, that is what I do on my day to day. And I utilize it, you know, my own personal story as a way to be empathetic to the process because I'm not talking about something I don't understand. I'm talking about things that I know and I've been through and I've gotten through and you know, for the most part have been through without being affected too much, you know, having, losing something is not necessarily a loss, you know, so much, you know, there's a saying of like, you know, stop praying to God that he, um, you know, restores what you had and give you back tenfold instead, you know, because maybe what you lost, you're meant to lose it. And maybe it was meant to be gone, you know, but if not, it'll be back plus, you know, 10 times the effect. So that's kind of things that will be inside the educational course. In addition to some of the other things, like I mentioned earlier about the fact that um, I spent the last probably 15 years doing research on the different type of yarns to use for different things um, and being open and honest about how to really do that, um, understanding how many skeins like it's really required to make certain projects what is the best way to go about um, purchasing them that's not going to put you in a direct debt to yourself? Um, and on and on to break it on. <laughs> and as it relates to believing what you dream, for me, it's all kind of like the journey, right? You start at one point, you have a middle point, you have an end point. That end point is where, you know, things kind of like shape shift based on where you want to go next. And it's only up from there. And that shape shift um, kind of is like, a, you're on the plane already. Now you're going to go into space. Now you're going to be on a spaceship. And it's just like whatever vehicle ends up being, um, it just puts you in a better space to be free versus getting in something that ultimately stops your journey. Um, and so with Believe in What You Dream, my goal is ultimately to um, teach enough girls to crochet and help enough of them to feel comfortable in their space because I know not all of them are going to want to necessarily have a design or crafting business, but it also puts them in a space where they can walk away with enough knowledge just to be successful across the board, you know, minimally understanding who they are, 
how they're showing up, what kind of things they actually care care about and how they're going to best get there. Um, and that's what's being shown through the program. And we have a follow-up portion of it because ultimately those girls, as they're graduating through the program um, and we keep in touch, now they have an opportunity to walk right into some of the benefits of YARN movement and some of, some of the other ventures that we have going on. Like for instance, um, Addiction by YARN movement, which is directly for handcrafters. And it's the same type of deal where it come, becomes an international marketplace of handcrafters. And literally, um, it's a curated experience where, you know, along the years of the last 15 or so that I've just been traveling the world, just trying to understand the lay of the land, depending on where I'm going, researching different cultures and, you know, making this discovery of other artisans, not just those who are in to crafting with yarn, but also those who are into leathersmithing and, you know, just handmade across the board, whether it's bags, boots, clothing, you know, furniture, decor, um, and putting them in a space where, you know, it's a curated experience for the consumer that doesn't require, it kind of takes you to a different place than what you can do online right now. Um, you know, Etsy is great. Um, so is Amazon. They're both very successful. But I think that the goal is to be able to build out personalized relationships um, where while we're getting and fulfilling the things that we want as consumers, also um, allowing these artisan areas and, um, and, you know, creating a cycle of really sustainable um, futures for all that are involved. And that really doesn't, I don't know, it's really not something that's 100% present, especially in, you know, regions like Africa, for instance. I think that there is a overarching notion that you go there, you can take, but not a whole lot of people are giving back. And so this directly puts us all in position where um, if it's something that you care about and you care about the next generation of girls and women who are building up the future, um, we can work together as, you know, like a um, system where the, whether you're coming in to get, um, you know, like consumable goods or you're interested in giving back in some way, it, be, it becomes a space where it's like a, a great well-oiled machine um, that really puts us all in a space where you feel good about your purchase. Um, and even the concept of being sustainable, you know, as a nonprofit, you know, executive director of a nonprofit, and even just the course of the last 10 years of experience of working with nonprofits, you know, there is this, <laughs> there's this notion that comes across where, you know, every now and then you find yourself in a space where you realize that you potentially aren't doing enough. And it's, it's probably because there's, there's more of, there's a larger need than you're capable of doing by yourself, you know? So I experienced this last year of going into East Africa. I walked in with, with the goal of really working with 300 girls um, and with the, amongst those 300 being able to leave enough supplies behind that going into, um, we're going into 10 schools. So I was working with 30 girls. It was a good number. They're ra nice round numbers that I could deal with um, and that, even if no one came to help that I can handle by myself, right? And, you know, walked into the first school and again, again, I can tell this over and over, it was 1,200 kids at the school. So even with my number being 300, 1,200, I don't know the, the, the exact breakdown between how many girls and boys there were, but my number was 300. So let's just assume that that number was even just faced right then. If I wanted to stop, I could have, but... I was left with this notion again of why I'd even I, I'm encouraged every Sunday to come online and just talk and speak and just tell tell my truths is because that moment let me know that A, I felt like it was a confirmation of God that, you know, yeah, I'm doing what I'm supposed to because it felt good, you know. As they say that, you know, you may not always remember what people 
say to you, you may not always remember what they did, but you will always remember how they made you feel. And it just felt really, really, really great to be in a space where, you know, um, with things not going exactly according to plan as far as those who are partnered with or even just um, raising enough money to even just, you know, like um, deliver all the things. Like my goal was to deliver um, three months supply of um, personal hygiene goods to each girl. So all 300 bringing, you know, bringing that much or being able to purchase while I was there, $300 worth of hygiene supplies. And I was able to get enough for maybe two and a half, uh, a month and a half. And for some two months, but not all because, you know, what ended up happening is that going into the schools and seeing so many girls, they did something very special. And again, this was one of those moments that it just made me just feel good inside, but also made me feel like I needed to just share and share these stories is that um, like for the soap, the girls were opening up the soap packages um, because, you know, it was more than just one box. So they're opening up the, the packages and they were started dividing this, this, the products up and they made a decision amongst themselves that we're going to share this. You know, and that type of like community base just, you know, just, I don't know, it felt good, you know, that it wasn't any like element of like, oh, no, they didn't pick you. They didn't give this to you, which I didn't go and um, walk in with that type of energy anyway. But it was just, you know, heartfelt moment just seeing that happen. I mean, even like the sanitary products. So we partnered with this organization called AfriPads. And they make um, reusable sanitary products, right? Where um, you you use the pad and it has like a, a moisture lock in there. And so literally it locks everything in. Um, it lasts for, you know, 14 hours, basically. You can wash it when you take it off and you hang it up to dry. And there's three other pads in there. And the life, you know, lifespan on them, you can use them for about two years before they began to leak, essentially. So even with those, they're packaged similar to how um, maxi pads are packaged here. Um, and we passed out the packs and kind of like the same thing happened. The girls opened up the pack and they had one to themselves, which is not necessarily sustainable, but when you're in a space where you had nothing to start, it was that moment again, like moments like that. And it just made me again feel like, you know, I have some horror stories working with um, some, you know, aligned nonprofits where, you know, maybe it was the fact that, you know, it was the relationship. They didn't know me. They didn't know my work. Um, maybe they didn't trust it. Um, for whatever reason, didn't deliver on the things that they said they would deliver. And what it did and how it affected the, pro the program and the project is that, you know, we had to cut corners on how much we can make, you know, provide. And, you know, who would have known if we would have got the extra 10 grand there or the extra five from the other organization that kind of pulled out at the end that we would have been able to get as much supply as possible. Because, I mean, on that one day, you know, we're, we're there and that was the first day of that, you know, installation. 28 days more to go. I would have had enough time to go purchase more and deliver more, but we just didn't have the funds available, you know, because we had to go through and like, you know, I would say too, that it's a lesson learned on my behalf of like just fundraising because I have to be more inclusive of all the different costs, um, you know, and these are like unknown costs that, you know, you don't necessarily always think about when you're, when you're planning, you know, for instance, we were in a safari truck and we had to pay for um, the engineers who were going to be doing the installations with us. And they had their own vehicles, but like, say, for instance, we were going up sometimes trails that were unpaved and so it was full of rocks. And um, one of the trucks had a flat tire. So they're there to do a project for us. So that was a sunken cost that I didn't account for before. 
And it also wasn't much cushion given the fact that I still wanted to honor the 300 girls that I want to work with and make sure that we were going with enough products. So I was coming out of pocket. As a matter of fact, I went in debt like 10 grand to make sure this project could really just fulfill itself. Um, and gladly did it and gladly would do it again. And I feel like um, if there are individuals who have that type of heart of, you know, giving and philanthropy and charity um, and understand what it gives back, then believe in what you dream and becoming a sponsor and, you know, don donating, whether it be your time or making a contribution towards the, the impact fund, <laughs> this is something for you. Um, because even with throughout COVID, now it's, it's more of a need. Because I think that here in the States, we face this challenge of people not being able to work. Um, but when we look at, you know, like Africa and, and like, you know, just international countries, period, that many of them, their main, main resource or their main income um, is tourism. And being in a space where no one's traveling, that means there's not much work that's coming into the country. Therefore, there's not much money that's coming in. And so having a charitable cause to walk into like this puts us directly in space where minimally these girls aren't forgotten. And so <laughs> that's what we're doing. So you can visit donate.yarnmovement.com if you're interested in making a contribution. Beautiful beanies, you can do that as well. Um, and I'm gonna say that on and on to the break it on. And we have our yarn ball done, so we're just gonna get into um, making today's square. Um, and I'm gonna actually keep the colors very similar to this one because um, I like the colors. And so I'm just gonna keep that going and I'm just gonna switch up um, which color I start with. I'm gonna start with pink this time. Oh. <laughs> And this will be a good time to just talk about my little bags that I'm doing here. So um, Black Friday, look out for something special, okay? Um, because that's the name is Yarn Movement and I absolutely believe in crocheting on the go. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that you should, um, even if it's not crocheting, if it's cross stage, if you're doing, you know, punch needling, if you're doing, you know, uh, knitting, whatever it may be, I think that you should be able to stitch everywhere you go. So with that being said, you should have a cute bag that you can carry with you. This is like my thing that I do, like anywhere I go, if I'm going out with, you know, my girls for some drinks or literally wherever I go, church, <laughs> on a train, on a plane, wherever it may be. I always have a big, large bag if I'm working on a larger project, but this is kind of like one of those bags that's perfect for, you know, dropping a yarn ball inside, I can close it up and it has everything I need in there. So, um, so yeah, that's true. And here I have my needle or my hook, my needles. So these are my tapestry needles to make sure I weave in my net at my ends. And then my little cute crane scissors. I love these. Aren't they cute? <laughs> All right. So that's my little show off moment. But this is another bag. This is big enough for eight yarn balls. Right now I only have three in there, but um, this kind of keeps everything together as well. So I said I was starting with pink, but you know what? I think I'm gonna start with blue. Yeah, let's start with this powder blue. Really actually it's coastal blue, um, Lion Brand, Basic Stitch. Coastal, that's the name of this one. So that's the color I'm using if you're interested in knowing exactly what color. And I'm just going to start off by doing the middles. Um, I'm not too pressed on time today as far as um, trying to get an actual piece done because um, it's just that time of the year where I'm actively just working anyway. So um, for me, I just wanna make sure that um, I'm doing my job of sharing the stories and encouraging you all to um, get involved with the movement of empowering young girls to discover their superpowers and we can do so together. Um, and there's room for everyone. This is not a 
S. Ladybug show. This is a, a everyone show. We have an opportunity to make an impact together, or as I like to say, share the power of creativity uh, to power these girls um, to, you know, sustain a sustainable future for them. Oh, I have some people in the chat. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I chose to do granny square because of you know my relationship with my grandmother and I just believe granny squares are probably like when I think about crochet I think they're the most traditional thing that you can do um besides you know <laughs> uh, do a single stitch. I think granny squares, you know, because it's because of the technique, this is the one that you can do. Um, I know that there are some knitters I know who can pull off granny squares with knitting, but I think for me, if I'm thinking about crochet, I think about granny squares. And so um, in addition to the fact that it's naturally connected to that feeling a love and comfort that you get from spending time, you know, at grandma's house, snuggled up with your granny square blanket. And that right there is the feeling of love and protection um, that I want everyone to kind of feel. I think my phone is going to ring again. Let me just... Give us some jams. Have you guys checked out the motivation, uh, mood, motivation mixtape that was done by my boy DJ Sin City? If you have not, you go to Linktree forward slash yarn movement and go down, scroll down to motivation mixtapes. You'll find it there. But yeah. I love to listen to some jams while I'm working to get all the way in the mood. Just going to turn it down. So, Oh, and guys, I decided to wear one of my um, one of my crochet. Well, I call them um, confetti tops, right? Because I just feel like it's confetti, and when you put it on, it's ready to party, you know. So, <laughs> and I'm gonna do a video so you can see all the colors that I have available because I've been actively working. Um, this morning I did a video of like tagging all of the beanies that I have, but I have clothing too, a lot of it. Most of which have already sold. Um, but that doesn't mean anything because you know I'm ready for it. And I'm looking forward to this holiday season because I think this is, aside from um, the election of, you know, like, <laughs> the queen comma in the, in the office. Besides that part, you know, I think that the holiday um, is going to really give us back some, you know, like some clarity about what's going on in, you know, 2020. You know, I'm glad it didn't cancel. I mean, I was a bunch of people saying just cancel it, forget it, it's over, let's move into 2021. But honestly, 
I think for me, um, being inside has really created more time for me to just nail down my, you know, like my focus and understand what's going to happen next. Because I mean, for me, <laughs> traveling for like at least the last eight years has been a major part of, you know, my life yearly. Um, you know, I was traveling anywhere from three to four times internationally every year for the last eight years. And so this is the first year I had to uh, sit my butt down. Um, and it forced me into a space of understanding like how, I mean, I think there were, we all know this pivot conversation that, you know, you need to pivot, move things around. But I think for me, um, since I am a creative and I'm a creative mind and I'm a, a true entrepreneur and it's, it's full sense of understanding that, you know, I'm here to make life simpler for consumers or solve a problem simply um, that all of those ideas that have been, you know, tucked away in my journals along the years, I can go back to and really give it like a home. And so that's what this year has been for me, you know, owning up to some of the things that I said that I would do, you know, um, even like a business, you know, helping other creatives, you know, I'm always that person that you can call and, you know, um, some people are sometimes intimidated to ask questions or ask for help. And, you know, I get to the point sometimes where I'm just like, I'm calling people because I see something, you know, or if I'm feeling, you know, like, cause me art fashion, you know, like, and really just seeing black people in particular doing what and say, how do you keep, keep doing that? Very important to, um, to my journey because, you know, there's been plenty of times where, I mean, it still happens down where it's people that, you know, I've, I've been supportive of for years and years. And, you know, when it comes down to something that, you know, actually has become a win for me, um, not celebrate it. You know, it's like uh, it's some kind of negative connotation that comes with it at times. And, you know, I just decided, you know, instead of even giving it any kind of energy, um, and I've always been like that, but I think that now I have a like more, I'm more clear on how to really just maneuver around that and, and keep it moving. Because it's just like, if you're not here for me, that's fine. Let me know now. Uh, because there's a whole world out here that can be, you know, there were a lot of like, you know, um, people kind of giving their opinions about what they felt like I should be doing as far as my nonprofit goes, asking while I'm traveling out of the country to do work, not knowing that I do work inside the country, you know, like besides what everything, everyone may think and believe, your whole entire life is not on social media. I mean, at least mine isn't. And there are a lot of, a lot of clients, there's a lot of people who, um, you know, it's not really your business on what their secret sauce is of how they're getting to where they get, you know, or even like some of the work that I do that's charitable, like it's not meant to be in a space where everything that is done as far as charity go must become poverty porn of putting people in a place where hey, you needed my help. Um, Cause that's not what it's about. I, I believe truthfully in this concept of you lift as you climb, because ultimately you're going to get to a place where your stairwell ran out of steps. So what are you going to do? You know, you're only going to be able to get somewhere. So, so many, you know, so, so far is done. You step and you're going to fall. Right. But you can also be in a space where someone gives you a hand up. So they just lift you up. It's your job. If you're serving life correctly in the, in the full sense of being in a space of being successful and being of service just to the human race, it is your responsibility to turn and lift the next person up. So therefore your next few steps can be blessed. And that is the chain. That's the vicious cycle of how success should look for everybody. And it's not for everybody. And 
you know, for that reason, everybody is not a part of this movement, you know, because maybe it's not something that they want to do. Like, you know, some people just don't care about um, the next generation of girl leaders. You know, some people, you know, it may, it may be in their heart to, you know, want to do some work and it may not be in their heart to want to hop on a plane uh, to take a 22 hour flight to take a 12 hour drive to go into the middle of a rural area where there's no running water, um, that it's hot so they can do some work. That's fine too. Like, but whatever, whatever track you're on, I think that there is capability of understanding where you want to serve um, and what kind of fits into what you care about um, and collaborate with that or own it. And that's what I'm here to do. <laughs> if you have a heart for it, let's go. You know, you want to get some money? Sure. Let's do that too. You know, because all of it matters. It matters being present. It matters, you know, having the ability, the proper funding to do all of it. Um, it matters having the, the proper access to be able to serve I me, mean, you know. And that's coming from a place where I've been on every single side of it, you know, starting as, you know, someone who just worked for a nonprofit uh, to someone who was in leadership of a nonprofit and now someone who is an executive director of a nonprofit while sitting on several boards. I just believe in the collaborative work of touching lives and being present and inspiring. I mean, we all need inspiration, you know, even me. I mean, it takes a lot. Um, people are always like, oh, you're so positive. Yes, it takes a lot for me to get here, which is more the reason why I'm very protective of people who I allow into my life because I work very hard to make sure that I vibrate very high. That way, anything I'm making, it vibrates very well. It's positive energy that's coming into your life. Um, anyone I speak to, it's inspiring and not degrading. You know, I think that we all have been in a space where we understand what it feels like to be degraded, um, unseen, not heard, um, you know, invisible. Therefore, on the opposite end, we should understand what it means to be powerful, to walk in confident with no one who can break us down, not giving consent to people who, you know, want to make us feel inferior because they're jealous or because they haven't been able to get over that threshold, partially probably because they're stuck at their stairs. They, they don't have new stairs in front of them, so they got to hate on the next person because they're in fear that they're going to get ahead of them, which they are. Um, but they could get in head together if they just turn around and help. My thoughts. But I know for me, um, very open to, you know, collaboration. I'm very open to just discussion. And, you know, I'm a lover of people. I love to connect with people. I love to have conversations um, and be creative. I don't believe in negativity. I stay away from it. I don't bring it to the table. Um, if there's something negative to be said, uh, I keep it to myself, you know, and just let it play out. I do a lot of praying. <laughs> I do a lot of creating to keep it away. Um, and because I think it's just an, a distraction, you know, it distracts you from, you know, your plan A. If your plan A is to win, everybody should be winning. So when you see on Mondays, my Monday motivation is like, you are a winner. You're going to win. And the moment you believe you're going to win, you're going to do it. So if someone hasn't told you today that you're going to win, you're going to win. So keep going. And if anyone tells you something left or lesser than that, tell them to say less and, and watch and watch. Say less, watch. And move out the way. Because we don't have time. <laughs> you know, people are out here losing their lives. You know, or giving the last that they have to save another person's life. And if you're not doing anything productively productive to add into the celebration of life and for a win, that means you're in the way. So go over there and continue to play your losing game um, and watch these wins happen and watch it happen on a collaborative space 
where, you know, you can come back later, but no kind of energy you need to bring. <laughs> and that's for anyone who's ready to receive it. So I have <laughs> seven done. I just need to do one more. <laughs> that's what I got to be getting on these these soapboxes, but these are really things I, I feel, man. This, this journey has been serious, you know, really serious, you know. If it was easy, I guess everybody would be doing it. Um, and I will say this is that over the course of it all, I walked away with some really cool lessons that can become a staircase for anybody who wanna, you know. Hopefully after this, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this live. Um, do a little extra live on um, Facebook and get back to creating are filling, I will say, fulfilling orders at this point. Because can y'all believe that Thanksgiving is week? I can't believe it. Here we go. More importantly, I think is a, um, an incredible, <laughs> or an incredible reality is that I've sat down, I've been in a house like, I can count on just two hands at this point how many times I've been out of the house since February 25th. Um, and really because I'm a care provider, um, because I'm a scientist, I understand the kind of level of seriousness um, that is connected to um, communal viruses that are spread like this one. Um, and there are actually three individuals in my household at this point who are high risk. And, you know, it doesn't seem correct for me to be selfish and put myself in a space where um, I'm exposed to something and I'm bringing into the household. And as a reflection of that, or as a result, someone in this house is sick. That just, you know, it doesn't sit with my spirit and I'm not willing to do it. So that is the reason why I've been in, inside. Um, but I have really, really great relationships and I've been able to continue work. So, you know, there's been music videos, there's been photo shoots that um, I've created for, um, thank God for having the opportunity for moments like this to engage socially and virally and digitally um, that has directly um, been useful as well. Um, you know, like not only on a national level, but an international level as well, um, with some of my folks overseas and y'all look out for these projects that are coming because they're very exciting. Um, especially when you know the background of like, I wasn't there for it. Um, and we weren't in a, the same space physically. So... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just excited always, but I'm like really excited about just what's to come, you know, because I think it's even the um, uncertainty about certain things that um, really, really makes me excited because when uncertainty comes, and you know, you have a will in your heart of doing something, that's when all the magic happens. And there's been some really magical things happening like that. And I've been looking online and um, looking at some of the folks that I follow and just looking at some of the incredible things that have been created. Um, I mean, you know, out of some of the, the tragedy have been like, you know, beautiful, uh, beautiful um, moments to, recognize and celebrate uh, some of the, 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 some of the individuals and some of the, you know, um, events that have kind of transpired because of, you know, um, 
you know, with all of the chaos, there's been a glimpse of a rainbow in between of like, I'm the sunshine in the blue skies or, you know, and that's been the part that has really, you know, continued to give me hope um, for a better future. And that's why I go so hard. <laughs> and y'all know I go super hard in the paint when it comes to like creating. And I think that um, many of you, if you are following Yarn Movement page, you see how often I post, but you know, if you knew the background story of how many other pages I control, like there's over 25 pages that I'm act actively working on um, for some of my clients for the branding company. So hard in the paint, <laughs> for real. Yep, so we have two colors on our granny square now. Um, maybe I'll do another color before and see I have oh, five minutes I guess Let's see if I can hurry up and get this complete before I sign off so yeah again tell your friends tell your family if you're interested in supporting believe in what you dream um they can do so by visiting Donate.yarnmovement.com. You know, if you are a crafter and you're interested in providing granny squares, you can do that as well. Um, there's eight granny squares that go into the beanie. Um, I'm asking and requesting if you um, decide that you want to make a donation of granny squares that you do four colors. Um, and you can inbox me and I'll share the mailing address of where you can ship them to. And that'll be that. And we can do that as often as you like. From that, those granny squares will be converted into a beanie and then available for purchase um, through donation or contribution uh, through a, a site that has been set up specifically for granny squares um, for the contribution towards the nonprofit. Um, and on goes the story. And then that way we are forever connected even if we're connected on social, then we'll ever forever be physically connected. Like actually we worked on a project together. Collaboration. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it says, this is amazing to hear how you're helping these girls. Yeah, we can help them together. This is not, again, like, you know, it was placed on my heart to do the work, but again, there is, there is more need than, um, you know, availability of time um, from one person. So this has to be a collaborative effort um, to make the magic really work. Oh, this is a nice combination and it definitely looks different from the previous piece. Oops. Yeah. Orange is done. And I'm just going to finish off with our pink hair. Um, for your, those who are just checking in, I'm basically mimicking the colorway that was used here. So there's orange, pink, um, well, cayenne, raspberry, tourmaline, and also coastal. So I'm going to be using those colors. So I'm just going to finish off with the pink now. And boom, and then we're done. Okay. 
see. In just the nick of time. <laughs> Trying to honor just an hour of everybody's time, although. I don't want that to happen again. Um, even though like I'm probably gonna spend the next couple of hours crocheting. I don't know how that just happened, but glad it didn't hit me in the face or anything like that. Because we are alive. That would have been crazy. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining in and hearing these stories and let me sit on my soapbox and just talk and tell everybody about themselves. <laughs> but, you know, somebody ought to say it. Because sometimes people are very negative and they don't know what you're going through behind the scenes. You know, just sometimes people feel like since they are connect with you and friends with you on social that they know your life. And that is not true, okay? They don't know who you are and where you've been through and what you're going through daily, you know? <laughs> People can never know your story. They need you to tell it to them, you know? So I'm that friend that I let people know. Like, hey, listen. Keep your negativity to yourself. Say less in my life if you have to do that. Um, if you're interested in doing something positive, holla at me. Let's do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is not the time for um, moving backwards and trying to figure out what steps you can retrace to make your life easier on a, on a selfish tip. How you can collaborate with someone and how you can collectively get there together. You know, it's not just about going after an individual bag. Go after one so heavy you have to carry it with other people, you know? Like stand in the gaps for each other, you know? There's only so much time, so much money that you can go after by yourself. And, you know, um, sure, it's, it's possible, but it takes less time and it's far more um, rewarding when you can do it together. Personal thought, again. But it's facts. And that is today's square. Okay. Stay on your squares. Make them. Again, you know, three ways you can get involved with Believe in What You Dream. By one, number one, visiting donate.yarnmovement.com. Make a contribution um, where you can sponsor Dream Girl Kids. Inside those Dream Girl Kids, again, it's going to be all the materials that are needed for the workshop itself, um, along with the personal hygiene products and personal energy. Secondarily, um, if you want to get one of the beanies, you can click the link in the bio where you can just purchase a beanie and you're making a contribution to support two Dream Girl Kids. But then you also have a beanie to rock and just show proof that you are celebrating um, girls and the discovery of their superpowers. And number three, if you are a crafter and you're interested in providing green squares, you want to do something by doing squares of colors um, and make sure you send an email to info at yarnmovement.com or send a DM and we can chat about where to send them to. But until next Sunday, I'm going to bid you all a farewell, give you a last sip until you remember to embrace your dopeness. that Ladybug signing out. See you next week or during the next live that I'll pop in on. All right. All right. Peace.